Hello everyone, I'm Professor Ricardo, and the purpose of this video is to obtain, to calculate, the neutrino oscillation probability in vacuum for the case of three Dirac neutrinos. So, briefly, in the neutrino oscillation model, there are two neutrino bases for the flavor eigenstates and for the mass eigenstates, and a unitary mixing matrix U. So, in other words, we may say that the weak or the flavor eigenstate nu alpha is a linear combination of the mass eigenstates nu i. And this combination is determined by the mixing matrix U. So, the mixing matrix U can be conveniently parametrized as the product of these three matrices. Again, we are dealing with the Dirac neutrinos, where Cij and Sij are the cosine and sine of theta Ij, which are the mixing angles, and delta Cp is the Cp violation phase. So, if we calculate the product of these matrices, we can write U as this matrix, often called the Ponte Corvo Maki Nakagawa Sakata PMNS mixing matrix. So, as we already said, the weak eigenstate nu alpha is a linear combination of the mass eigenstates, for instance, nu k. So, we consider this summation over k, and we have this matrix element u alpha k star. And, obviously, this is in the cat space, and this is in the bra space. So, the state evolves on time, obviously, and the weak eigenstate nu alpha t is a linear combination of nu k t, which we will assume a plane wave treatment, so nu k is the exponential of minus i e k t, nu k on time zero. As a consequence, nu alpha t is equal to the summation over k of these matrix elements, the exponential on energy, and multiplied by nu k. Now, we are interested in the amplitude of the transition nu alpha, nu beta. And this amplitude is given by this product, nu alpha t, nu beta. And we do have these two terms. So, the product will be a double summation over k and j, u alpha k star, the exponential, u beta j, and the product nu j nu k. But we know from orthogonality that this is equal to delta j k. So, if you consider this summation over all possible values of j, when j is equal to k, you will have the summation over k, u alpha k star, u beta k, and the exponential on the energy. Now, since we have the amplitude, the probability for the transition nu alpha nu beta, which we may call p alpha beta, is equal to the square of the absolute value of the amplitude. So, p alpha beta is the double summation u alpha k star, u beta k, and the complex conjugate of these terms, but with a different index, obviously, so u alpha j, u beta j star, and this exponential multiplied by the exponential of plus i e j t. Okay, but what are the energy of a neutrino mass eigenstate? For instance, the eigenstate nu i. So the energy e i is p i squared plus m i squared on the square root. And we can write that as p i multiplied by this square root, 1 plus m i squared over p i squared. And we know that the neutrinos are very relativistic. Then, as a consequence, we can use some approximations. First, 
EI is equal to PI multiplied by this square root. And uh, proceeding with an approximation, uh, an expansion of this term, which this term is uh, very small, so uh, we can write that as 1 plus MI squared over 2 PI squared. And we are going to neglect other higher terms. And then PI multiplied by that is equal to PI plus MI squared over 2 PI. A second approximation is that PI is approximately equal to PJ. I mean, the momentum of the eigenstate nu i is almost the same as the momentum of the eigenstate nu j. And let's call that an average momentum P. And that is equal approximately to the energy E. So EI, we may write it as P, the average momentum P, plus MI squared over 2 times the energy. And since we want to calculate the difference EK minus EJ, let's call that delta E, this is the P is going to be cancelled out. So we, we will have MK squared over 2E minus MJ squared over 2E. And let's call this difference as delta M squared KJ. And the third approximation is that the distance traveled, L, is approximately equal to the time. So the probability alpha beta is the double summation over k and j of the product of this matrix elements times this exponential. Instead of this difference, we're going to write delta m squared over 2e and instead of the time t, l. So now, let's consider this term, this part of the summation. Of course, we do have to, to include the exponential to calculate the summation, but let's focus on this part first. And we are going to use some properties of the unitary matrix U. For instance, it is a unitary ma matrix, so U, U dagger is equal to the identity. And as a consequence, if you write, this, write the matrices explicitly, you can obtain easily that the summation over J of these terms, for instance, this line multiplied by this column, so U alpha J, U beta J star, this is equal to the delta alpha beta. So when alpha is different to beta, it is equal to zero. When beta is equal to alpha, then it is equal to 1. And if you change the lines, instead of alpha, beta, and instead of beta, alpha, and you, you will get this relation here. Or you may think about multiplication of this second line by this, the, this first column, you will get this relation. So both are equal to the Kronecker delta alpha beta. And we can write this term, since these two terms depend only on k and these two only on j, so we can write that as the multiplication of these two summations, one over k and the other one over j. And this term is exactly this delta. And this term here, the summation is exactly this other delta. So we do have here the product of these two deltas, and this is obviously equal to the delta alpha beta. So, in other words, delta alpha beta is equal to this term. And this double summation, we can separate that on three terms. The first one, when j is equal to k. The other one, when k is greater than j. And the third one, when k is less than j. So, when j is equal to k, you will have the product of u alpha k star u alpha k, which is the square of the absolute value of u alpha k. The same here for u beta k, plus these two terms. I'm going to include these brackets here just to emphasize um, a certain procedure that we are going to, to obtain soon. So this term, if you interchange what is k, and j. So if we change k for j and j as k, 
you will get that the summation over k greater than j of u alpha j, u beta j, u alpha k, u beta k star. And then you recognize that this product and this product are the complex conjugate of each other. So, instead of writing this term this way, we're going to write it as the complex conjugate of this term, which is exactly this term here, the same. So, this and this are the complex conjugate of each other. And you know that when you sum a complex number z and its complex conjugate, this is equal to two times the real part of z. So, delta alpha beta is equal to this first term plus two times the real part of this summation. And we know that the real part of the summation of complex numbers is equal to the summation of, of the real part of those complex numbers. So this is a, a useful relation. And now, let's continue working with the probability and we may separate this summation, this double summation, for j equal to k and when j is different to k. So when j is equal to k, we, we will get this term, which is the same as this one here, plus the summation for k different to j um, with this exponential multiplied. Here there is no, no, no exponential because j is equal to k, so the difference delta m squared is equal to zero, and the exponential of that is equal to one. Now, let's work on this term here, which is this term, the summation for uh, k different to j. We can separate that in two summations, when k is greater than j and when k is less than j, and we will proceed uh, in the same way that we did. So instead of this summation, we are going to interchange what is k and what is j. So now we will get k greater than j, and this is going to be u alpha j star, u beta j, u alpha k, and u beta k star. And this, since we uh, interchanged what is k and j, uh, this we will get a minus sign. That's why this is a positive. And since this term is, um, we, we can write it still with a summation uh, for k greater than j, but we can write this as the complex conjugate of this term here. So instead of u alpha k, u alpha k star, u beta k, u alpha j, u beta j star, and the exponential with a negative sign. So the complex conjugate of this parenthesis here is equal to this term here. Now, again, you do have a complex number plus its complex conjugate. And as a consequence, this is equal to two times the real part of this term here, which is this uh, product and the exponential with a negative sign. And again, the, the real part of a summation of complex numbers is equal to the summation of the real part of those complex numbers. Now consider this product. Let's focus on this product. Consider this product of matrix elements here as a complex number and this exponential is a, another complex number. So um, let's, let's write this product here as equal to z. So we do have to calculate the real part of z times this exponential. So I can write z as the real part of z plus i times the imaginary part of z. And instead of this uh, exponential, we can write it as the cosine of this argument minus i times the sine of this argument. And the real part, we are interested in the real part of this result here. So the real part of it will come when we multiply the real part of z and the real part of the exponential, which is the, the cosine of this argument. And the other real part will come from the multiplication of this term 
with this term in green. So we will have i squared minus i squared, which is a plus sign, the imaginary part of z times the sign. This is equal to the real part. These two terms, they are equal to the real part of this, of this term. As a result, we get 2 times the summation over k greater than j of the real part of z, real part of z, multiplied by the cosine of this argument, plus 2 times the summation of the imaginary part of z times the sine of this argument. So we do have these two relations here. And the probability alpha beta is equal to this instead of this term, we're going to use this relation. So this term is equal to delta alpha beta minus two times this summation. So p alpha beta is the delta minus two times this summation. Plus, instead of this term, we're going to write these two terms. So plus two times the summation over uh, k greater than j, here the same summation, real part of this uh, product, cosine of this argument, plus two times the summation of this imaginary part times the sine. So we can write that as two times the summation of the real part as a factor, and then we will have one minus the cosine of this argument plus this term. And we know that 1 minus the cosine of theta is equal to 2 times sine squared of theta over 2. So the probability alpha beta is equal to the delta minus, instead of this, 2 times the sine squared of this argument over 2. So 4, 2 multiplied by 2, for the summation of the real part of this term multiplied by the sine squared of this argument, now divided by 2. So there is this 4e in the denominator. And we repeat this third term. So to conclude, as we planned, this is the calculation of the neutrino oscillation probability, considering three direct neutrinos, and assuming a plane wave treatment. Now, we are ready to investigate some interesting properties of this probability. But first, let's calculate the survival probability when beta is equal to alpha. So, the probability nu alpha, nu alpha. This term here, this product of this matrix, matrix elements, when alpha is equal to beta, so we will get u alpha k star, u alpha k, u alpha j, u alpha j star. So this is equal to the square of the absolute value of u alpha k times the square of the absolute value of u alpha j. And this is obviously real, so we do not have the imaginary part of that. I mean, the imaginary part of that is equal to zero. So, the survival probability is, for instance, p alpha alpha, this is equal to one minus four times the summation. The real part of that is equal to this product times the sine squared of this term. So now we're ready to, to calculate, to obtain some interesting properties of these probabilities. For instance, the the different oscillation sectors, the atmospheric, reactor, and solar sectors. We are ready to discuss the CP violation amplitude, etc. But those properties we can discuss in another opportunity. Thank you.